Hi friends, welcome to my home. I'm Cindy, you can find me on Instagram at Cozy Mountain Cottage. Today I am here to show you how I'm going to take this new but supposed to be looking old machinist box and I'm gonna really make it look old. Um, I might be a little obsessed with drawers. I absolutely love anything with lots of little drawers. I love little drawers. So I also love things that are old and chippy and weathered. And so when I found this box, I could not resist. I had to buy it, but it just doesn't look old enough for me. So today I'm going to do a technique using cracked patina from Amy Howard at home and show you how I'm going to take this pretty new machinist box and make it look old. So I hope you'll hang in there with me um, as we go through the steps. I've already, the very first most important step, I think, is to clean it with clean slate. So I've already done that, okay? I've used the Amy Howard at home clean slate. This cleans everything. It takes off wax, grime, grease, dust, dirt, everything. Cleans it really good. Let me tell you what I'm going to use, all right? First of all, I'm going to use Cracked Patina. This is such an awesome product because, you know, a lot of times as DIYers, furniture redoers, um, we tend to just paint something and then take sandpaper and scuff up the edges or whatever. And, you know, I mean, pretty much you can spot that technique anywhere. You can tell when a, when a piece of furniture has been painted and then sanded on the edges and on the high spots and stuff, which I have a lot of pieces of furniture like that because that's how I used to do it. But then I was introduced to the Amy Howard at Home products and started watching a lot of her um, tutorials, her videos on painting and different techniques. And I learned about her cracked patina and I was so excited to try it. So I've, I've used it before, I've used it on, I think I've only used it a couple of times. Um, but what this does is this gives you not only a nice crack, but it gives you a nice chippy finish because if a, a piece of furniture or box is old, if it's been moved around a lot, it's moved from here to there and it's been shuffled around in rooms or whatever, typically, you know, after a lot of years, it's not going to just wear evenly on all the edges, but paint's going to chip off. It's going to flake off. It's going to just get, the paint will crack everywhere. I mean, you've all seen like the old farmhouse doors that are all chippy and cracked and they're original. I actually had one and I mean, pretty much all the paint like flaked off of it before I, before I could really get it sealed on there. But anyways, I digress. Um, so this cracked patina just gives such an awesome, authentic look. And what's really fun about it is you can layer it so that you can make it look like, let's say somebody had a, you know, a wonderful old um, side table and, um, and then, you know, whatever. And th that side table moved on to another family and that family loved the side table, but they painted it a different color. And then something happened and that family moved on to it or that side table moved on to a different family. They painted it a different color. And maybe this happened two or three times. And by the time we come upon it, Here's this old side table and it's all cracked and chippy and we can see like two or three different colors. And that's the look that we can get with the cracked patina. So I'm gonna stop talking and yammering on right now and I'm gonna move on and tell you how I'm gonna do this. Oh, first I'm gonna tell you what the other colors are. So I've decided that I'm going to use Weybridge White. I love this white. When I very first painted my cabinets in our small little house here, I painted them Weybridge White because I love it. It's a warm white. I love a warm white. So um, that's what I decided to use because I want this box to have like an antique look. So I figure warm is warm is good. Well, then the second time I painted my cabinets, I painted them boxwood green, which you can see in the background. So this can, I know it's been opened before and used before, but you know what? I used like a tablespoon out of it. So I'm just going to be using from this can today, um, English boxwood. So, but I don't want to just do two colors and I wanted the like original color to show through, which is what's on here right now. It's just a stain. It's got some sort of a matte kind of a 
seal put on it. I don't know. I don't know about it this way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully have an end result that shows green, Weybridge white, and the original color. All right. So hang in there. I'm going to show you how to do it because it's really awesome and it's really, really simple. So we're going to get started. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cracked patina. Okay. Cracked patina. And I'm going to put it in, I should open my containers first. I'm going to put it in a, a clear cup. I, I like to keep these clear cups. Around. Actually, I need to get the shorter ones, but these are what I have. So I'm going to put this cracked patina in here. Sometimes, depending on your weather conditions or whatever, it can be really thick. It can be really thin. Um, this, it's actually kind of kind of thickish. It's kind of thickish. So I might, I might put just a little dab of water in it. Let's try that. All right. A little dab of water, a little dab will do ya. Now, when you're using the cracked patina, if at all possible, it is best to use it on a flat horizontal surface. So with this small box, I'm able to do that because when I'm ready to do the front, I will lay it on its back. And then that way, again, nice flat horizontal surface. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to apply it on a side like this um, just because Again, it's a thinner product and you know, you, you, you want it to stay where you put it. So I'm trying to decide, do I need to really, what do I need to do about these metal pieces? Do I need to worry about them? I think I'm just not going to worry about them, you guys. I'm just not going to worry about them. Okay. I'm not going to worry about them. All right. I'm going to be using my Amy Howard chip brush. I love these brushes. I say you can't have too many of these brushes around. So we are just going to apply. I'm gonna load up the brush, but then offload it. And we are going to apply this cracked patina. Now, one thing that I do know, I'm not sure I knew it the first time I used it. I know it now, so I will share with you. The thinner you put this on, the thinner your cracks are gonna be. The thicker you put it on, you can figure that out, the thicker. The thicker or wider the cracks will be. Now, when, when you put the crack patina on, it goes on really shiny. And when it dries, it's still really shiny. So that's our first step. How easy was that? Crack patina. Now what we do is we wait. We wait to what and wait for it to dry. So let me, um, one thing you can do is you can, you can hit it with a hair dryer. Um, I'm just gonna fan it. Okay, so you stay right there. Okay, we're back. The cracked patina is dry, and I guess I use the word dry loosely because cracked patina never really like fully dries. You couldn't just you couldn't just leave it at this step. Okay, this has to have something on top of it. All right. So, um, but it's you know it's 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 dry it's dry enough to touch. Okay, so that's how we know that it is it is ready to paint. So the first thing I'm going to do, or the next thing I guess I should say that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Weybridge White, which I've poured into a cup. I like to use these little cups. And I will tell you that um, I did thin it just a smidge with some warm water, okay? Because it was just, it was just kind of thick and, you know, a little too thick. And I just, it wasn't quite the consistency I wanted. So that's one of the beauties of Amy Howard chalk paint is the ability to to thin it if you if you need to, but I always recommend putting it into a different container so that you don't contaminate your can. Okay. Here, load up my brush. See, I really need wider mouthed cups. And I'm just going to start applying this. You don't wanna work it too much because as this paint dries, it's gonna start to crack. And if, if you go back to where you've already painted, um, with your brush, you'll, you'll pull the, you'll pull the paint and it just kind of looks kind of yucky. Um, I guess the only thing that's makes that okay is the fact that this is the bottom, basically the bottom coat. Okay. So I can't wait to show you this up close. Oh my gosh, this is drying so fast. It's drying so fast. And again, we're going for a cracked chippy finish. So it doesn't have to be perfect. This doesn't have to be like this 
smooth, perfect coat that you would do on something else. Okay, let me see if I can get my camera down here so that you can see what is happening. Do you see that happiness? Look at those cracks. Do you see that? Oh my goodness. I'm in love. I'm in love. Okay. We don't want to do the next step with the paint too wet because then what we will do is just kind of smudge it and smear the paint around. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to remove some of the paint. All right. And um, I have eight tools for that. Well, 10 really, I guess. 10 tools. I was thinking eight, but I use my thumbs too. So, um, okay, this is this is looking really good. Coverage doesn't really matter to me. I don't care that I'm seeing some of the original stain through here because I want to see that anyways. But you want it to be even because you don't want puddles. And um, I see eight puddles, so, you know, we're not perfect. Okay, so I think, I think though that it's good enough to start. All right. So this is the really fun part. Um, let me get a damp paper towel handy because you know, it's fun and, and messy, which makes it more fun. So, okay. Have a damp paper towel. Now I need to dry my hands. All right. Just hang in there with me. Okay. Eat your snacks and just sit back. It's fine. It's good. Okay. This is good. Okay. So now remember I said that I kind of wanted it more around the edges, the cracking and stuff that happens with age anywhere. But what I'm going to do now, I'm really going to focus more on the edges. Oh, do you see that? Do you see what's happening? Do you see how it's just taking away? And I, I think I'm going to do it kind of heavy right here. Just because, again, this is, oops, you're looking at the, oh, the front of the box. And maybe this is where hands would have, you know, touched it a lot. Okay, so fun. See? And messy. Okay. I love things that don't have to be perfect. Like my hair, my makeup. Just lots of things about me don't have to be perfect. So okay. another thing that you can do to help lift the paint off is to just lay your brush down. And I kind of take it and hold it, hold it like that. One finger, two fingers, whatever. And you can, you can kind of drag it. See, and that's also lifting the paint off. With the technique we've been doing where we've been re removing this paint, it, it leaves like some little sharp, edges and and it just it leaves it leaves it kind of rough and so we want to we want to smooth that out so i'm using a 220 you can use a, a 320 400 you know probably the finer the better but this is all i had on hand um but i'm not going to do it so much that it just you know sands it all down and melds it all together i just want to take off the sharp point And that feels good. <laughs> okay, now, moving on. So now I'm gonna put another color on and I want it to crack. So the first thing I need to do is put another coat of cracked patina. So, still got my cracked patina right here. This should be enough. So I'm just going to, and again, this is dry. I've sanded it, you know, to get the rough, just the little rough spots off. So it feels pretty good. I mean. It feels textured. It's definitely got a nice texture to it um, because of the crack. So. Okay, the cracked patina, the second coat of cracked patina is now dry. Again, it still looks shiny, but it's definitely dry. Dry enough for the coat. I mean, I mean again, cracked patina never really like completely dries even if you left it forever. And that's why I don't think I mentioned before with the, with this part of the process, the cracked patina, you could actually put this on and come back tomorrow and, and then put the paint over it. It's the paint that you can't let get too dry in order to, to remove it. So the cracked patina, you can come back in three days. As far as I, my understanding, I know I've let it dry overnight before, but basically it's just waiting until it gets dry. 
Um, I'm trying to speed the process up a little bit for the making of this video, so I did hit it with a blow dryer, and that works too. Um, so again, the craft patina is it's shiny, but it but it's ready it's ready to be painted over. So um, the next step is to put the English boxwood on. I love this green. This is my favorite green. This is what I painted my kitchen cabinets and I absolutely love it. So I just wanted something else in my house that had that same color green on it. Um, and I did want to point out that with a process like this, but it, it's a little, a little bit step heavy, but th there's, there's simple steps. It's a good idea to have another project going at the same time so that while you're waiting for things to dry, because that seems to be the most time consuming part of this is waiting for things to dry, then you can go over and work on something else. I don't have another project going on right now, so I pulled out my laptop and I've been looking at recipes and <laughs> things like that while I'm waiting for things to dry. So we're ready, English boxwood, a clean brush. This is the Amy Howard chip brush, which I love. And we're gonna put a coat of English boxwood on here. Now again, when you do this coat, you wanna be careful not to work the, the paint too much. You know, put it in one area and then kind of let it go because if you if you wait too long and then come back and try to swipe over it again when it's already started to tack up you'll end up pulling the paint off because the cracked patina will already have started doing what it's supposed to do so i'm trying to get a thick enough coat without going back over it <laughs> So guess what we have to do now? We have to watch paint dry. That's the fun part. But if you like watching paint dry, join me, will you? Now, I wanna show you, let me get you real close again, because I want you to see what's happening. Can you see the cracking that's taking place? You can kind of see where, the, where it's still wet, but as it's drying, look at those cracks. So also, I'm not sure if I told you and that's so great. I love it. I hope you could see that. I'm not sure if I mentioned before too that, you know, with using this cracked patina, you don't have to do the process that I'm doing where I'm removing some of the paint to make it, to really give it that chippy look. You could just leave it like this and let it be cracked. Just let it be cracked and, and move on. You would just let that dry until it's thoroughly, thoroughly dry because then it, it won't pull off anymore. And then you would go back and um, wax it. So, you know, it's perfectly okay to just stop at this step of just the crack, but I want that chippy look because especially now, since I'm using two different colors and actually the third color is the original color of the box, um, what I'm gonna do now is when I start pulling it off, you're gonna start seeing the, the Wave Ridge White and you're gonna see the original color. So it's gonna have that real awesome layered look. So I am going to, ooh, look at that. Love it. But another way that I think is really fun, okay, pardon my dog hair. I have really hairy dogs, um, is using my fingers. So I'm gonna show you that. And again, I don't want to do, I don't wanna do too much. You know, just, just a little here and there. You guys, this is so fun. This is just, it's such a fun technique. Okay, so what I decided to do is show you the next step of this process on one of the drawer fronts. So this is one of my little drawers. Um, I ended up, I taped around the edges and I've done all the same things that I that I walked you through on the top. I'm going to be using light antique wax and dark antique wax. One thing very important to know is never, never, never use the dark antique wax without the light antique wax unless you seriously want to change the color of your project. Okay, now, so load up the brush and we always, with our wax, we always offload onto a piece of cardboard. Just offload it because you do not want to get too much wax, okay? You can always add more wax, but it's a lot harder to take wax away. And so then I'm just gonna go over this. And on a piece like this with all this texture, you know, I really do want to make sure that I get the wax down in 
all the little cracks and crevices. Okay, so, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that come to tack, okay? We're gonna let that get to the point where it doesn't feel greasy and it doesn't move around because you don't wanna put the dark wax on until this has come to tack. Otherwise, you will just kind of blend them all together and you don't wanna blend them together. You want them to, to lay separately. So um, that's it for the light wax. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes or so. This feels nice and dry. It's not, it's not wet, it's not moving around, it's not greasy on my fingers. So ready for the next step, which is the dark antique wax. So I will take a clean brush. And again, we're gonna just load up the brush just like this and then offload it onto a piece of cardboard. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of whisk it around the edges and then feather it out. I love the dark wax because this is what really starts to give a piece that that antique look, that aged look, that dirty look, you know? Um, so just really like the way that looks. Awesome. Let me just I want to put a little bit extra just on the edges and maybe right here in the center where the pull is. I always figure that those those are the dirty areas where you know hands would have touched and whatnot. So okay. All right, that looks good. Okay, we're back. The dark wax has come to tack. And now I'm going to put the Dust of Ages powder on it. This is such a fun product because this just takes it to the next level of looking antique, old, aged, weathered, you know, all of those good words. So um, just simply dip my brush in it, just like this. It just kind of gets some on the brush. This is this is messy because I mean, literally it's, it's dust. It's just a dust. It's a good dust though. And then we're just gonna lay it on here and I want to get it, you know, I want it to get down in the texture and down in any cracks or crevices that there are in this. Um, yes, it's going to make a little bit of a mess, but, you know, that's okay. We'll take care of that later. So, get that in there real good. And now, I'm going to put the lid back on this because I always think, oh, if I accidentally knocked that over. <laughs> while I'm doing the next step. That would be that would be terrible. So now I'm going to take a queen, a clean, well it was clean until I touched it, a clean lint-free cloth and I'm just going to buff this, okay? We always buff our wax after it's come to tack to get that nice sheen. So now what I'm going to do is buff this dust down into that wax. Starting to see that that sheen come through. All right. See, this just the dust of ages just it just kicks it up a notch. It just gives it such a nice antique look, old, vintage, you know, just weathered, whatever, whatever word you want to use, it's there. All right. I love it. So that. That's it. That's the final step of the process. So I decided that I wanted to show you one more thing before I before I continue on. So this is this is the front of the cabinet. It's sitting up on its end right now. And this is after the cracked patina, the Weybridge white, more cracked patina, and the English boxwood, and then chipping it off, you know, using my fingers to chip it off. And then I've sanded it down and it's ready for the final coat, which is the light antique wax, then the dark antique wax, then the dust of ages, okay? So I wanna show you the difference. So this is before those last three steps with the waxes and the dust of ages. This is after. Do you see that? I mean, this, this looked exactly like this before I put the two different waxes and the dust of ages on it. And so this just gives it that old, vintage, weathered, I've been sitting in the back of a warehouse kind of look. <laughs> so.
So anyways, I just wanted to show you that. I'm super excited to get that done on the rest of it. I promise I'm not gonna say anymore. The next thing you see is going to be this box all finished.